Welcome to Sacred Cow Shipyards, where no ship is safe from being taken down to its nuts and bolts. Well, boys and girls and children of all ages, this episode is not for boys and girls and children of all ages. And any movie viewer who is watching movies in the 1990s, and specifically the latter half, will understand why as soon as I say what we're talking about. And that is to say, we are talking about the Event Horizon ship from the Event Horizon movie. And yeah, this is definitely not a kid's episode. Don't let your kids watch this. We're going to talk about it. We're going to show some pictures. They shouldn't be watching this. Cool. Additionally, this is going to be a two-parter, so go ahead and buckle up and ride out this episode, and maybe watch next week's episode too, because who knows what's going to happen. Anyways, like I said, we're talking about the Event Horizon, which is the name of the ship, from Event Horizon, which is the name of the movie. There are, on occasion, some really lazy people naming things, and it's kind of disappointing on some level, but that's kind of beside the point. To begin with, we're going to actually talk about the ship, because that's the easy topic of conversation. And frankly, the ship makes a certain degree of sense. Um, it was a prototype. It was the first generation of what was supposed to be faster than light ships that could go anywhere in the solar system in an instant, literally. Um, it accomplished this by a captive black hole shoved up its butt. And I'm not entirely being facetious about that. It did, in fact, have a captive black hole in a containment vessel at the very stern of the vessel. So, yeah, it had a black hole up its butt. And as a brief aside, captive black holes are not exactly an unusual thing in terms of science fiction propulsion systems. The Romulans from Star Trek Next Generation also actually used captive microsingularities to power their very large cruisers whose name I can't pronounce. I don't think they shoved those black holes up their ship's butts, though. Additionally, the Romulans exclusively used the black hole as a power source, not as a transportation device, which is what the Event Horizon did, and we'll talk about how badly that went wrong in a little bit. Anyways, um, forward of that was kind of the engineering compartment, engineering section, power plant, blah blah blah, so on and so forth, that the ship needed for sublight travel and normal day-to-day -day ship stuff. And hanging off both sides of that engineering section were sublight drives. And they were spaced out far enough away from the highly experimental, highly theoretical, it wasn't really sure if it was going to work or not drive, that it wasn't supposed to interfere with the inner workings of said black hole drive doohickey. And then way, 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 way forward. In fact, it was so far forward that it was out on a stock, and said stock actually had emergency separation methods in case the aforementioned black hole up its butt decided to do something awkward. Way up front was the command and control and crew and miscellaneous other things compartment of the ship. And I say compartment, it is actually a very large ship, and the front section was also very large, and it had enough space for a large number of people and scientists and experimental bays and so on and so forth. In fact, the Event Horizon ship is quite, quite large. Um, it's almost disturbingly large. Uh, a ship was sent out to rescue it after things went horribly wrong, and we're going to get there. And the ship that went out to rescue it was middlingly large, and it looks utterly tiny against the side of the Event Horizon. But anyways... The overall design for an experimental vessel that is literally attempting to harness a black hole does actually manage to make a certain degree of sense. I mean, black holes are kind of complicated in every sense of the word, um, and the one that it was attempting to harness was pretty small, so it's Event Horizon, no pun intended, that is actually the name of the boundary around a black hole inside of which light cannot escape. Outside of that, light can escape, and further outside of that, other things can escape, but the event horizon is basically what we see as the black hole because we can't see inside of it because the light inside of it can't get out. Anyways, the black hole they were trying to harness was probably quite 
small, and its event horizon was probably not very large either, so if something did go catastrophically wrong, the forward section of the ship could blow the explosive bolts of the neck of the ship, and hopefully, maybe, possibly escape the ass of the ship consuming itself and the drive modules and everything else nearby. Maybe. I don't know. Once you start messing with black holes, physics gets really, really, really weird. So we're just going to kind of gloss right over that. Anyways, this was supposed to be a faster than light ship. And they're not really clear if it actually worked, honestly. Um, it did disappear for a significant amount of time and then magically showed back up again. And no one's entirely sure on where it went in the interim. But there is some pretty strong evidence. That is to say, um, the ship did disappear. Somehow, they somehow were able to exploit the black hole in the butt and transport the ship. I am not entirely clear if they, like, sucked the ship up its own butt or if it made a portal that it collapsed into or I, yeah again we're going to gloss over the mechanics because again black holes crazy who has any idea nobody anyways black hole so this ship went out into space activated its quote-unquote fdl drive and vanished it did not actually appear where it was supposed to appear and it certainly was not instantaneous. It showed up basically exactly from where it left about a decade later. And everyone was kind of like, well, that's weird. Well, they were correct. They were just a couple of orders of magnitude off. Maybe a lot of orders of magnitude off. So, yes, um, the ship did vanish from our reality. Um, not even just our solar system, not even like earth orbit it was just gone from our concept of reality it definitely went somewhere else and it came back alive for all functional intents and purposes and not only did it come back alive it came back massively evil um i i, I can't describe how utterly janked up this ship came back we're talking like uh, the Cenobites with their puzzle box levels of evil trapped in a ship. Something that is supposed to be inanimate. And I know, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm a Navy sailor and ships are never inanimate because mostly they're just bitches. But this one came back a lot more animate than any ship I had ever had the privilege of serving on. Um, in fact, it went out of its way to kill its entire original crew in truly imaginative and utterly gruesome fashions, and then did the same for a significant fraction of the crew that was sent to rescue it. Um, yeah, it, it was not a happy ship. Um, which kind of brings us to the general hypothesis of what happened. So, like I said, black hole up its butt. And it tried to ride that black hole in a controllable fashion. And it came back truly evil in the literally wrapping barbed wire around people's heads kind of way. Hmm. It kind of sounds like it took a quick hop, skip, and a jump straight into hell. And maybe got possessed, or maybe simply got infected by the hell verse that it was in, and brought that literal hell back with it and tried to inflict it on reality. And thankfully, the rescue crew had the presence of mind of kicking it right the hell off back into hell again. Well, hold on. Wait a second. We're talking about faster-than-light travel that involves skipping through hell. Wait. I've heard this story before somewhere. And that's all from Sacred Cow Shipyards. Please be advised that any ship left on the dock for more than 24 hours will be compressed to a cube. Have a good day.